Putin and XI in Western propaganda Why does XJP get off so lightly? October 29, 2016 Moscow Beijing Express, on the Saker By Jeff J. Brown Better watch out, Vlad. When Western propaganda throws an ism at you, the gloves have come off. Think Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, Communism, Socialism, Extremism, and Islamic Terrorism, for starters. After all, behind the Great Western Firewall, they are all the same thing, right? A recent cover and main article in The Economist, pictured above, reminded me of just how hyperbolic and ideological is the West's propaganda against Russian President Vladimir Putin. While maybe good polemical fodder as a cartoon on the editorial page, the fact that this demonic caricature merits front cover status, indicates just how programmed and institutionalized Western mainstream media is. Westerners love to insult the anti-West press for being party organs and government mouthpieces. But, why travel so far? They only need to stay home with their national New York Times, Radio France, and BBC, to really appreciate Bernation Siops being passed off as serious journalism, as in Edward Bernays. I don't call it living behind the Great Western Firewall for nothing. I have a friend whose email signature is Blame It on Putin. For a while, he changed it to Blame It on China. But that didn't last long and he recently changed it back. As we have seen with the most depressing predictability, President Putin, specifically, and Russia in general are the voodoo pin dolls of Western racism and demonization of another people, Slavs, and other religions, Orthodox Christianity, as well as widespread Islam and Buddhism in Siberia. What is so remarkable is how unhinged and psychopathic the West's racist propaganda is against Putin and co., compared to the attacks on China's President Xi Jinping. XJP, and the Chinese people. It transgresses irrational fear, to the point of being sick, black humor. Yet, about the most polemical front cover against XJP was Time magazine in April, 2016, seen below. But, making China's leader look like a Mao Zedong Blade Runner replicant is tame and almost quaint, compared to the Orwellian Emmanuel Goldstein tsunami being launched non-stop against Putin. Pretty tame stuff, this, compared to the racist feeding frenzy that Western propaganda is ginning up against Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Slavic countrymen. True, Russia has the longest border with the European Union, and there is tremendous historical Western precedence to keep Germany from forming any kind of economic or geopolitical alliance with Russia. As well, the West's Ukrainian color revolution turned out to be a total genocidal failure with Russia reintegrating Crimea and Donbass, biding its time for a hopeful remarriage in the years to come. Needless to say, the revenge factor, and if there is anything that Western tyranny loves more, it's to avenge its long list of failed chaos and extermination around the world. But, Russia is officially a capitalist country. Its current constitution was largely written by American fifth columnists. The Russian central bank is widely presumed to be under the thumb of the West's oil banking families. In spite of widespread ignorance around the world, on these two counts, China can definitely list itself in the opposing column. Given America's post-1917, deranged, hysterical fear of, and untold billions spent to crush any communist expression around the world, you would think that Red China and XI would be public enemy number one. But no it's Putin and the Russians. One factor might be Western perceptions of Russia's and China's military strength. Russians have shown off their powerful, well-run army, navy and air force in Syria and the Black Sea. The West is probably in a bit of an historic rut, when looking at China's rapidly modernizing People's Liberation Army, PLA, like back to the Korean War, when the just liberated new China had no air force, no navy and no nuclear missiles, yet still kicked the pants off Uncle Sam, using mostly World War I vintage arms. But then again, nobody in the West will ever admit that they lost the Korean War, in the first place. I can tell you that here in China, just like 1950-1953, XJP and the PLA do not fear American military power, not one iota. Respect it, yes. Fear it, 
Never. President Xi has put the PLA on combat-ready war footing and he means it. But there is a new gadfly in America's imperial ointment, one who may push President Xi and the Chinese people up the racist hate-o-meter, to Slavic levels, and that menaces the Philippines' new president, Rodrigo Duterte. This plain-spoken, no-bullshit world leader is Uncle Sam's worst nightmare. He is calling American empire what it is, genocidal, dictatorial, and rapacious. Not once, but day after day, meeting after meeting, press conference after press conference. At September 8-9, 2016 ASEAN summit in Laos, Duterte showed a colonial-era photo and talked about the genocide that the, the United States committed, as it brutally conquered the Philippines, 1899-1913 killing an estimated 1.25 million people, about 25% of the nation's population. Western media censored it like the plague and even semi-friendly outlets like the South China Morning Post were aghast that he actually associated the West with genocide. Heaven forbid. This, in spite of the fact the easily 80-90% of the history's genocides and exterminations were and are being perpetrated by Urangloland, including of course Israel. Behind the Great Western Firewall, genocide is exclusively reserved for powerless, dark-skinned people and unrepentant socialists, like Serbia's framed and destroyed Slobodan Milosevic. Speaking truth to imperial power, Duterte gives a blunt lesson on Western genocide, during the recent ASEAN summit in Laos. How dare you tell it like it is? Image by Beta.com Duterte is a semi-official socialist populist. His cabinet is inclusive and consultative, with former imprisoned and exiled political opposition leaders, including communists and Muslims. He clearly can't stand America's grotesque, imperial arrogance and tyranny, in a country that has been a pliant doormat for the United States' mayhem and exploitation in Asia, going back to the turn of the 19th to 20th century. When Duterte's hometown of Davao was hit with a very suspicious, false flag smelling public market bombing, on September 2, 2016, he suggested that the automatic to blame Abu Sayyaf group, a Muslim independence outfit on his island of Mindanao, is controlled by the United States Special Forces based there, which is of course true. But, world leaders aren't supposed to speak truth to power, especially little brown brothers, as Filipino Foreign Minister Perfecto Yase has described America's attitude to his long-suffering and abused nation. After signing with XJP more than three times as many development deals, $15 billion, as the, the United States has totally invested to date in the Philippines, $4.7 billion, Duterte declared to the world that the U.S. has lost and that his country was realigning with Baba Beijing. His official government-slash-trade delegation had an unprecedented 300 members and another 150 business people paid their own way to join the Asian Love Fest. The two sides set up bilateral committees to discuss and negotiate their South China Sea claims, which is anathema to Uncle Sam, who always insists on being the rabid Rottweiler in the middle. Next stop was the United States prostitute Japan, where he further declared that the Philippines would be free of all foreign military, meaning the United States Marines and Special Forces, something that has not happened since 1521 when Spain began colonizing and raping the archipelago. This is all very powerful, history-changing geopolitics. Almost every other world leader who has talked and acted like this, has either been overthrown and slash or murdered by the West, sooner than later. Clearly, from the perspective of the West, Duterte's visionary, regional reset is closely tied to President Xi and China. It is for this reason that XJP may be getting the Slavic Putin treatment on an accelerated schedule, in a desperate attempt to trash China's deep, historical leadership and trust role in Asia. The old story about people being able to see that the emperor is not wearing any clothes, is very apropos to Dudert. He is shouting out to the world that Western Empire is a colossal failure and humiliation for his impoverished, exploited citizens, and by extension, equally so for every other member of humanity outside Urangloland. Once one person pierces the veil, it emboldens others to finally have the courage to pile on. For Uncle Sam, it's already happening.
Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak is visiting XJP and Co in Beijing, October 31 to November 6, 2016, an unusually long state visit by a world leader. Najib has declared that Malaysia is committed to strengthening friendship with China and pushing ties to new highs. As more and more countries embrace China's history founding One Belt One Road plan, in which the whole world is and will benefit into the 22nd century, including Uranglowland, expect ever more desperate, racist demonization and dehumanization of Xi Jinping and the Chinese people, along the lines of Putin and the Russians. Maybe the CIA MI6 can dig up that old 19th century chestnut, the Yellow Peril, and give it a modern day makeover. Stay tuned to the New York Times, Radio France, and the BBC, as the propaganda SIOPS campaign takes shape. As more and more world leaders are emboldened to speak out against Western tyranny, thanks to Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte's courage to make a public stand, President Xi Jinping can expect his face to morph into Putin's who is demonically pictured above on a January, 2014 Newsweek cover. Check out Jeff's newest book, The Top-Selling China Rising Capitalist Roads, Socialist.